At the Princess Margaret, I am responsible for the psychosocial well-being of patients that have been diagnosed with prostate cancer across the trajectory of the disease from uh, diagnosis straight through to uh, uh, facing survivorship issues. And when I am uh, visited by patients that are experiencing anxiety or distress, my strongest recommendation is to have patients uptake or resume exercise programs. I truly believe that exercise um, plays a, a, a very significant role in how patients manage uh, the experience of being diagnosed. When I ask veterans, uh, survivors of prostate cancer, what helped them most in terms of the psychological uh, and physical uh, impact of being diagnosed with prostate cancer, they undoubtedly state that exercise played the biggest role in helping Exercise has both an acute benefit, meaning a short-term benefit, and a long-term benefit. The acute benefit uh, of exercise is that when patients are diagnosed uh, with prostate cancer, it's hard to think of anything else. And the benefit of exercise is that it can take us out of our heads. In other words, to focus our attention on the actual experience of exercise. This may seem like a little thing, but when we feel like we don't have control over our thoughts and we are only thinking about the cancer experience and the distress relating to it, even little brief holidays from those thoughts can be helpful. And that is the benefit of exercise. It, ha it, it causes us to focus on, on the actual pain and ache uh, associated with exercise. And another very uh, important benefit is that if you know after you exercise, you're in a relaxed state, you're feeling fatigued, and this is um, a state that's um, kind of opposite to the uh, distress or the anxiety um, or even the kind of fight or flight response we have associated with being diagnosed with cancer. So that can be helpful. I think when uh, patients talk to me, sometimes they talk, about it, talk to me about being overwhelmed or experiencing periods of being overwhelmed. That is when I suggest they exercise because when you're feeling overwhelmed, it's very hard to uh, use your willpower to pull out of that. So if you can distract yourself and exercise, you can pull yourself out of that overwhelmed state. And then in terms of the long-term benefit of exercise, the scientific literature uh, is actually quite strong in suggesting that even moderate amounts of exercise can uh, really help in terms of improving psychological well-being and patient quality of life. And they, they talk about things, obvious things like decreases in, de uh, in depressive uh, feelings, uh, decreases in, in feelings of anxiety, increased uh, self-esteem. They look at practical things, you get better sleep, uh, better appetite. All of these things, of course, combined together can be helpful in challenging the cancer. My actual experience that I think is a fundamental aspect of the exercise is that, is that when someone is uh, diagnosed prostate cancer, there can be a, a real feeling like um, your body's betrayed you, it's, uh, it's failed you. And in fact, the opposite is true. Your body's done a, phenom uh, a fantastic job of challenge, challenging your disease for most of your life and uh, for hopefully for your future. Uh, it has lost a battle true enough, but it has certainly not lost the war. And this is where exercise can really be helpful. It can reintegrate a sense of uh, a full self of mind and body. The mind really does help the body to recover. The body also helps the mind um, to deal with anxiety. So if we can get a unified front, we're going to do a lot better in challenging the cancer. Now, if we assume that exercise is beneficial and, and, and helpful, uh, then we have to also take a look at the challenge of it. People have looked at um, what increases or what factors influence adherence in terms of lifestyle behavior change, healthy lifestyle behavior change. Many people have worked on this. If you think about exercise programming, gyms or uh, healthy eating or uh, dieting, um, and uh, it's obviously continued to be a challenge. So I must admit that I certainly don't have an answer for uh, however, I am a psychologist that has worked in the area of health behavior change for a number of years. And so I think um, what I'd like to do is just offer you a few pointers that might help you. First of all, uh, we have to uh, believe that exercise uh, 
is the right thing to do. In other words, if it, uh, we have to believe that it will actually re uh, result in um, better health. And I think that's a no-brainer. I think we can all agree to that. But the other thing is we have to make it personally meaningful to you. And that really means that, uh, uh, and that is actually where being diagnosed uh, with a serious illness like prostate cancer can act as a treat, as a what we call a teachable moment, meaning that uh, when one's uh, future health is threatened, um, all of a sudden it became very meaningful uh, to focus our attention on that health. So if we take advantage of that teachable moment, it means that um, initiating an exercise program now may be more meaningful to you uh, than it ever has been in the past. So that's a very important part. Another factor to consider when you're thinking about exercise and adherence is that uh, not a one-size-fits-all. Try to personalize uh, you, your approach to adherence uh, so that it's meaningful and practical to you. So consider things as simple as do you prefer to work uh, or to exercise in the outdoors or the indoors? Do you prefer to go to a gym versus your workout room in your basement? Do you prefer to exercise uh, with a group or a social running group, for example? Sometimes you'll find the kind of social aspect of exercising with others is helpful, or even the sense of responsibility that they've got to get up in the morning and go out and do that uh, walk or run with their running group because uh, they've uh, decided that they would uh, work as part of a team. Other people uh, like to exercise on their own, and that is um, uh, not uncommon as well. And, you know, you can think of it more as a, as a form of meditation for some individuals just to have that alone time. And finally, uh, it also becomes very important that you plan uh, for your, the development of your exercise regimen. Things to consider are, uh, do you want to tell others? Sometimes telling others can encourage you uh, to stick to the, your guns and, and initiate your exercise program. The other thing that becomes very important is to uh, set a start date. Uh, people undervalue that, and in fact, it's better to wait two weeks before you start your exercise program and set that date in two weeks than wake up uh, and say, I'm going to start my exercise programming now. Because you haven't quite arranged or planned for a main, the maintenance of that exercise program. If you can think about it this way, we've got to get that exercise program into your regular daily schedule. And I know all of our schedules are very full. But remember, this is something that's meaningful to you. And meaningful things we can make space for. So we need to make sure that you've scheduled time.